I'm Gretchen. And I'm Madison. Coming up on today's show, we take a look at what might be an overlooked avenue into sports, and we revisit the drama department's current production. Stay tuned, you're watching Roar TV. Hey, Oviedo, it's Caroline. Hey, Oviedo, I'm Peyton Kane. Oviedo, I'm Kaden Martin. Hey, Oviedo, it's Yana with today. And this is your main five from Building Five. It's Friday, November 10th, and this is Roar TV's Weekly. It's a big day here on campus as the football team will host Jones in the first round of playoffs. We have over a dozen swimmers competing in states and cross-country runs in the regional meet. But as these fall sports complete for championships, winter sports are gearing up for the year and one sport tryouts next week might be an unrealized opportunity for you. For more, here's reporter Maddie Howard. It's a situation that any aspiring athlete fears, getting cut from team tryouts. In sixth grade, you know, I tried out for the volleyball team and it was a pretty sad experience because I got cut from the team and everybody kept telling me I was good and everything, but when I tried out to see my friends move on and make the team and I didn't. And not making the team in high school can be even more devastating as the window for future opportunities to play dwindles. Now that I'm a sophomore and if I would get cut from a team, I would only have two years left and, you know, so I think for college, if I would get cut right now, I wouldn't keep like continuing on. But some athletes in search of prospect find an uninspected landing spot. My freshman year, uh, if you told me that I'd be wrestling, I probably would have looked at you a little funny at first. Wrestling definitely was not the first thing that came to my mind, especially as a girl. I don't know. I felt like I, I had to do something. I felt like I had to do a sport. I had to, you know, in my high school career, I had to do something. It kind of gave me this like, I, I should give this a try. This seems really fun. I wanted to try something new, and I was like, you know what? It's high school. Why not? The wrestling team refers to itself as a no-cut sport, meaning there's a spot for you, if you can tough it out. And even in years that we've had, like, 80 kids come out, which has been a while since that's happened, we've been able to figure out the practice schedule where some kids go outside of the room for workouts while the other kids stay in the room. I feel like the fact that it was, like, a common try come and do it, you I mean, you're not going to get kicked off was a lot nicer, especially to a freshman. Um, it was very nice to have kind of an open space and a space where I knew I could grow and they would help me grow. And that pathway to involvement with a sport can lead to certain benefits, not only in physical fitness, but in professional settings as well. Um, joining a sport really helps you with communication and leadership, especially when you're out and you need to communicate with people. Like, let's say for soccer, you would have to pass the ball, or like if you want to be a goalie, you would have to communicate with your team. It's like there's this old saying from a uh, very famous, one of the most famous um, American wrestlers of all time, Dan Gable, that says once you've wrestled, everything else in life is easy. So I would say the big benefit is challenging yourself. That personal growth is amplified by the community and the team touts. And yeah, a few of them may seem weird and weird looking and we're definitely going to be smelly because we work hard, but after a while, like we do team dinners, we do holiday things and you really get to know everyone on a different basis because of how much you are together. Hearing that one very loud person yell out, it's not that bad sometimes is what gets you through that last sprint. As tryouts approach, the team hopes to get a few unsuspecting people through that last sprint this season. For Roar TV, I'm Maddie Howard. If you took the October 28th ASVAP, the results are available in the NJROTC office, Building 10, Room 004. Also, over in NJRTC will be the annual Toys for Tots collection drive. The Toys for Tots program collects new unwrapped toys during November and December each year and distributes those toys as Christmas gifts to the less fortunate children in the community. All new toys can be dropped off in NJRTC or the front office. Last day for donations is December 8th. Hey Oviedo, I'm Steven with a sponsored message. Biro Kappa, November is National American Heritage Month. The first American Indian Day in the U.S. state was declared on the second Saturday in May 1916 in New York. In 1990, President George H.W. Bush approved a joint resolution designated November as National Native American Heritage Month. 
Be on the lookout in Building 8 for displays celebrating Native American writers and creators. Learn more about each individual with the QR codes on your screen. Hi Oviedo, I'm Jack McGrady and it's your Oton Sports Weekly Update. Last Friday, varsity football won 48-14 over Haggerty on Friday night to keep the Maris Cup for the seventh year in a row. Saturday, boys and girls cross country competed in the district championship meet at Haggerty High School. Both teams advanced to the regional championship next weekend in Jacksonville. Boys in swim and dive won the region championship on Saturday. The girls team finished fourth place overall. On Monday, boys varsity soccer tied 1-1 with Freedom. The lone goal came from Ellison Ruffin. Boys varsity soccer tied Haggerty last night 2-2 with huge goals from both Ellison Ruffin and Ty Slane. Tuesday, girls soccer tied their games 3-3 with West Orange. Jitter Narcisse took two goals and Emma Goodenaugh scored once. Last night, varsity soccer tied Haggerty 1-1 and Layla Ayup scored on the corner kick from Kate Mickelson on their goal. Girls weightlifting lost 48 to 39 to the Winter Springs Wednesday. That's all for our weekly O-Town Sports Update. Now back to the studio. Before we go, as the football team fights on the gridiron, one group of characters might be in a fight for their lives in the auditorium. The drama department continues with the haunting of Hill House tonight and tomorrow. Let's look once again at a report from Addison Armour. In the coming weeks, the theater program is performing the show Haunting of Hill House. The show is about a group of people who are invited to this supposedly haunted house called Hill House and it's super creepy and super like interesting into why they're all here and what do they all have to do with each other and why were they all invited by this mysterious man and they all get to know each other and get to know the house and it kind of starts to take effect on all of them. The unique personalities of the people within the house and the actor's portrayal of the toll that Hill House places on its residents is what really drives the show. Theodora is a medium um, and I have ESP, it's extra sensory perception and like my main talent is that I'm really good at like reading cards when they're held out of sight. I'm Luke Sanderson in the play. Um, I am a, a heir to the house, like it's gonna get passed down to me. And I am there because um, Dr. Montague, one of the main characters, can't be there unless a family member is there. So my family just elected to send me there so he could do his work there. In order for them to truly understand their characters, there's a lot of preparation done behind the scenes. The show is like completely different than anything we've done in the past because it takes place in 1959. So obviously the way we talk, the way we look, the way we sit is all very different. So it's interesting to see the process of this and being like, oh no, I can't sit that way because that's not how they would sit. And also like the wording is really interesting. Like there's some phrases that I have and I'm like, I would never see that in real life and it's really interesting. It's a psychological thriller, so it's really hard to get into the mind of the characters. We've, um, right now, we've, we've finished blocking the show, and we've, we've done the blocking several times, and we just sat down on, on Thursday and had a roundtable discussion about their characters and their objectives and uh, what they want and how they feel about each other, their relationships to each other, relationships to the house, how the house makes everything about this play even when they enter the room, you have to be able to, to read it on their faces and in their actions how the house is making them feel. There's a saying that goes, once you enter Hill House, you can never leave. Overall, this dedication can be seen through the cast members' phenomenal performances. Come out on the 9th, 10th, and 11th of November to see the show. I'm Addison Armour reporting. That's it for this week, Oviedo. We'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend, and go, go Lions! Lions.